While physical manipulatives are powerful tools, there is a place for digital math manipulatives that we can't overlook. In today's video, I'm going to share with you five reasons digital math manipulatives should be a part of your classroom, as well as some of my favorite digital math manipulative resources. Stay tuned. What's kicking educational rock stars? The Center Fairy here, your ultimate source into the wonderful world of simple classroom systems that make your teacher life easier. If this is your first time joining me here on the channel, make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button and click that bell so that you get notified when I go live or upload a new video here on the channel. I haven't always been a fan of digital math manipulatives. I've used them occasionally when teaching whole group and for maybe demonstrating on the smart board while students worked with the physical math manipulatives at their desk. It has always been my belief that to get their hands on manipulatives was way more powerful when exploring math concepts. But today I'm going to share with you five reasons I think you should be using digital math manipulatives and then I'm going to share three of my favorite digital math manipulative resources that you can use in your classroom tomorrow. Now the first reason that I think you should be using digital math manipulatives in your classroom is access and availability because let's face it, budgets are tight, teachers don't have a lot of money, and the reality is, is that to have a set of math manipulatives, all the different types of math manipulatives that you might need, and have a set for each student in every single class for every single grade that might need to use them is expensive. Often what happens is a school will purchase a set of teddy bear counters or a set of fraction tiles or a set of uh, pattern blocks whatever the math manipulative is, and they're often kept in, say, the math instructional coach's office in a closet, and you have to check those out. Sometimes you're lucky enough for you to have a set of things in your classroom. Most of the time that happens because the teacher has paid for them out of their pocket, and they want to make sure that they have a, a class set. However, the reality is it's still expensive, and so digital math manipulatives are a way for you to be able to give a set of math manipulatives to every single student and they're able to use them and have what they need. And you'll see when I share some of my favorite resources that there are some math manipulatives that maybe you hadn't even thought about using in your math lessons because you've probably never actually seen the physical form of these because they were kind of thought of as a luxury and not necessarily a necessity, which they kind of should be. Reason number two that you should be using math manipulatives, digital math manipulatives, is that they are super easy to clean up. Obviously, there's not a bunch of pieces everywhere. You're not having to make sure that you've got all the pieces back. This was probably one of my biggest struggles whenever I would check out the math manipulatives from our math closet or if we, you know, because we usually had one for the grade level or even the ones that I had purchased myself and I would give out to my students, it was always making sure I got all the pieces back because they, they get excited in their learning or maybe you have students who aren't using them correctly. You know, whatever the case may be. And when you go to clean your, your classroom at the end of the week or the, sometimes at the end of the year, let's be, let's be real, um, you move a bookcase and there are math manipulatives under the bookcase. And you're like, man, I wondered why I didn't have a complete set of things. So that is another reason. It's super easy to clean up super easy to keep all the pieces, obviously, uh, because you're not having to keep up with multiple pieces, but when, and they're ready when you need them. So I love digital math manipulatives for this reason. And it's another reason why I love using them inside of our math centers when a student needs manipulatives. I loved to be able to add maybe a device to the math center. And especially if they were going to need, uh, the tens cubes or excuse me, 10 sticks, or they were going to need place value blocks. I'll get it out in a minute. If they're going to need place value blocks. They would have, they could have the digital version and they could use those inside the center, but it didn't create a lot of cleanup when it was time to rotate centers. So a lot of our centers do are, are really great for using math manipulatives and you can find links to those centers in the description for grades K through five and they're available over in our shop. A lot of them are really great for you to use math manipulatives with 
for students to review when they're doing their math centers. But a lot of times you don't want to do that because it's going to be a lot of cleanup when, they're ha when they have such a short amount of time. But using digital math manipulatives is a great way to get those into the hands of the students and allow them to still have that tool when they're working through their math centers. Now the third reason that I love digital math manipulatives is for whole group modeling. Now I mentioned that this is one way that I have used digital math manipulatives. I would often pull them up on the smart board, but it's not just about you demonstrating to the class during your lesson and using these manipulatives up on a smart board or through maybe using your computer and projecting that up onto the board somehow. It's not just about you putting them up in front of the, front of the class. The, the reality is, is that even if I give all of my students a physical set of math manipulatives, I still need to demonstrate it. And nothing is worse than you trying to demonstrate what they're, they should be doing either in their groups or at their desk, or even if you're using doing this with littles and they're on the carpet, they all want to get up close and see what's going on in front of you at your feet. And so I loved using digital math manipulatives because I could have them on my computer. They were showing up on the screen behind me. And so students could be working at their desk, but they could still see up on the screen to see what it was that I wanted them to be doing. And they would be using a physical math manipulative while I was using a digital math man manipulative to demonstrate and model whatever the skill or concept was for the whole group. Now, the fourth reason that I love digital math manipulatives is because learning styles are different in your classroom. Some students need that hands-on. Some students are motivated and way more engaged when you make something digital. I don't know what it is, but let's face it. I put tens blocks or place value blocks in front of a student that are just the, the ten sticks and the ones cubes and a hundreds flat. I put those in front of a student and yeah, they're cool, but you make those digital and all of a sudden the students think that they are just, that it's the bee's knees. There are some students that just are going to grasp concepts better when something is digital versus hands-on or vice versa. I love using digital math manipulatives because I can't send students home with a set of math manipulatives to work on their homework. They may need to use those and in when they're working on homework or when they're working on things at home or to practice. They need those and I can send a link to with parents so that parents can pull them up at home and I'm not having to worry about uh, materials coming back to the classroom. This is great for all those different learning styles that you have in your classroom and you can meet the needs of your students. So I, I love it for this reason. There's so much differentiation that can help and maybe they do, maybe you've demonstrated it with hands-on and they're just not getting it, but you put it on an iPad and all of a sudden they get it. Now the fifth reason that I love using digital math manipulatives in my classroom and you should love this too, is capturing student work. Listen, and capturing their learning. When they use physical math manipulatives, the problem is, is that they use them and then their work is erased because they've got to reset it or they've got to, and there's really no way to capture their learning. Now, technically you could probably have them use their device to take a picture of it and then they could upload it and so forth. But there are a lot of different apps nowadays that can um, you can use to record student work as they're working. My favorite feature of the iPad is the screen recording. So for example, I have used some of these digital math manipulatives in my classrooms before and I've had my students that obviously we had iPads in the classroom. I've had them turn their screen recording feature on and record the work that they're doing on their iPad because then they would go to the website, they would, and I'm going to show you these websites in just a moment, but they would go to the website, they would find the math manipulative that I wanted them to be using, and they would work through a problem, but they're screen recording their iPad, it saves it to the camera roll, and then I can go back and I can watch their thought process. Whether it's using the native apps like the screen record function on an iPad, or using other apps that allow students to record what's going on on their screen, it is just a really great way for them to record their work in video format, but also if they're using these digital um, these digital math manipulatives, it's very simple. They know how to take a screenshot once they finish something, take a screenshot, and then they can upload that screenshot into platforms like Seesaw, Google Classroom, 
or other learning management systems. So using digital math manipulatives to record student learning is a huge reason why you should be using them in your classroom as well. Some of my favorite uh, resources and websites to use for digital math manipulatives I am going to share with you now. And I'm going to share with you three. There are so many other uh, places that you can find digital math manipulatives. Um, I feel like, you know, the the if you just do a Google search, you're going to find one that's going to work for you. But these are three of my favorites. So the very first one is Toy Theater. Now, I'm going to leave the links to all of these down in the description so that you can visit these. And I'm going to leave the links to specifically the virtual math manipulatives for each of these sites because there's other things on these sites for teachers, but I want you to easily be able to find the math manipulatives. So the first one is toytheater.com. And as you can see, there are so many different math manipulatives that you can use. Uh, we're just going to go into one of these. Let's just come back up here and let's look at the fraction strips. And when you open it, it is web-based, but it's going to give you a workspace. It's going to give you draggable pieces that you can use so that you can model uh, fractions out for your students or whatever the other uh, manipulatives you're using. You can also draw. Um, so you have the ability to like write out on the screen. I'm just, and then you, of course, you can erase this as you need it, uh, whatever you've drawn. And uh, then you can actually uh, trash it, you know, if you want to clear the canvas as well. Um, I love the fact that it gives you alternative ways over here. So quick at quick links. So if you were doing fractions, for example, with the fraction strips, but you also wanted to show your students what it looked like with um, circles, you could do that very easily and uh, and so forth. So I do like this. Uh, Oh, I don't know why I put that in there, uh, but you just drag and drop. So it's a great website. Again, that's toytheater.com. Uh, and again, I'll leave that link down in the description. Now, the second one that I really, really love is virtual uh, manipulatives from Didax. So at didax.com, again, there's other things that you can get from Didax, but this is just their virtual manipulatives. Uh, as And I love their interaction, their interface. Um, just like with toy, uh, let's go ahead and go back here. <clears throat> but with toy theater, there are so many manipulatives, some things that I didn't even realize you could use a manipulative for, to be honest with you, because they're not typical manipulatives you're going to see a school purchase uh, for math. But the reason I like Didax is because it, it it's not as many, so it's not as overwhelming. So especially if you have students that, you know, they maybe, you know, there's a, a common math manipulative that's available on both, but maybe you want to use Didax because there's not as many for students to get distracted with. Uh, but let's look at things like the number line. It opens on a very clean uh, interface. You can start, do the starting number, ending number. I love the fact that I can do a starting point and then I can do an ending point and it's going to tell me uh, we can use this for addition, all different types of things. So you can get in there and play with those. I also like the fact that they open in new windows. Now, obviously with Toy Theater, if I wanted it to open in a new window, I could simply just uh, right click and open in a new tab so that I could always have my menu open. Uh, but I love that Didax does that automatically. So uh, there's still a lot of the most common uh, math manipulatives available on Didax. Some of the most common ones to use are Unifix cubes, tens frames, um, if you're teaching the lower elementary, as well as base 10 blocks. Um, and then I also like the fact that they have spinners. Uh, so if you wanted to play a game and you wanted to pr uh, put this up on the board, you could have a spinner and you could actually go in and uh, put the number of spaces you need for the spin. And, and then uh, you can just click spin and it'll spin and come up with numbers. So this is really nice to have um, if you want to put something really quick up on the board. Now, the last one and probably my favorite is from the Math Learning Center. And th listen, there's some pros and cons here. On the Math Learning Center, their math apps are just that. They're actual apps. And so uh, that is that can be a pro and a con. Uh, there's also not as many. So I think that the basic ones that you probably might need are there, but I don't really like the fact that there's not as many as you get on some on the other two sites I shared. But another, a pro to using the Math Learning Center is the fact that you can actually open these on the web or you can download them as an iOS app. 
So if you have a classroom full of iPads, you can actually download these as an iOS app on the uh, Apple devices. When you click this link, it'll take you over to the Apple Store and you can download each of these as an individual app or you can actually download them as a Chrome app. So if you are a Chrome teacher or a Google Classroom teacher and you're familiar with Chrome um, and Chrome apps, you can actually download these as Chrome apps. Then you can, they will be in a folder on your desktop. You can put that on your desktop and you can easily access these apps uh, without having to go to a browser to access them. So you can easily pull them up and access them from your desktop. So I do like that. And again, um, there's not as many, but let's go ahead and let's just uh, jump into this one. So let's jump into the Chrome. Let's go ahead and open up the web page just uh, for the sake of this tutorial. And uh, it takes just a minute. This is another reason I like having them as the Chrome apps. But you have this big, large workspace. You can drag over and you can model um, easily by just dragging them over. Um, you do have the pencil function so that you can draw. Uh, so if you need that, uh, there's all kinds of, I do think you can change the colors as well. Yes. Oh, well, that's, uh, let's see, changing the colors. Yeah, it's been a while since I've played with these, so some of the functions have changed. Um, you've got a calculator on here. Um, you can put text on the board. You can change the color of the text. So if I wanted to label these, for example, uh, tins, and then and I wanted to put that up here, and then maybe I wanted to add another text box. Uh, ones, done, and I could put that right here, and then... Uh, however I want to do that. So I do, uh, I like the big open workspace. Again, my biggest complaint with um, the Math Learning Center is there's just not as many. Um, but some of your basic ones, like I said, are there and it's really a preference and depending on which ones you're going to use. But those are my three favorite websites to use for math manipulatives. First, you have toytheater.com, didax.com, and the mathlearningcenter.org. Most of the outcomes for using digital math manipulatives that I have shared here can be achieved with physical manipulatives as well. The bottom line is both physical and digital math manipulatives can help students explore and demonstrate math concepts that they're learning. I don't believe that physical manipulatives will ever be fully replaced, but I do believe that both types can work together to provide meaningful and engaging learning for your students. Now, if you're looking for more tips, strategies, and simple systems to take back into your classroom to make your teacher life a little easier, check out the videos on your screen. Thanks for watching and keep being an educational rock star.